Hey, it's Ben here from Going Green, and today we're in Cornwall to visit the Eden Project. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the Eden Project, here is a brief overview. The project was first conceived by a man named Tim Smith, who took inspiration from the book called The Lost World. The idea behind Eden was ridiculously simple. It was inspired by Arthur Conan Doyle's Lost Worlds and the notion that somewhere in the world there was a lost civilization in which all the bounty that was put on Earth had been gathered together as an informative lesson to humankind that you should treat abundance with respect. So we wanted to build the first greenhouse in the world that could contain a full-sized rainforest. Over the last 20 years, the Eden Project has received over 20 million visitors, but there are still lots of you who have not had the chance to visit, so we thought we'd give you a grand tour and show you exactly why this place is so special. Now this place has literally just opened up after the coronavirus, which means we are some of the first visitors to step back inside. My first visit to the Eden Project was back in 2005, which was only a few years after the project had been constructed. The project was positioned inside of an old clay quarry, which had a significant effect on the overall design. While the architects were creating the plans, the quarry was still being mined, which meant the ground was constantly changing. This was resolved by using bubbles as a design inspiration, which are able to adjust to the changing landscape. The air inflated bubbles are made from a material called ETFE. This material is only 1% the weight of glass. It also allows the light to penetrate inside, which means the plants can receive adequate sunlight. There are two separate biomes on the site. One houses the rainforest, while the other one holds plants from a Mediterranean climate. The other buildings on the site have also been constructed using sustainable materials, such as recycled wood and rammed earth. Now the main purpose of this entire project is to provide sustainable education to the public, which they have managed to do in a number of interesting ways. Places like this are incredibly important for providing sustainable education, however the Eden Project has actually gone one step further in order to solidify their sustainable ethos. All of the water required for the biomes and the facilities on site come from sanitised rainwater that would otherwise have collected at the bottom of the quarry. The energy for the project comes from solar panels and local wind turbines and this year they are installing a ground source heat pump which goes 5 kilometers down into the earth. Almost all of the food that they serve in their cafes has been grown on site or has been purchased from local farmers. All of the products that they sell in the gift shop are ethically sourced. They aim to promote local businesses while also providing the visitors with items which can help them live a healthier lifestyle. 
The final building that you will enter at the Eden Project houses two installations. The first one is called Blue, which symbolises the production of oxygen through photosynthesis. As you can tell, Austin rather enjoyed this one. The second installation is called The Seed. It was created by a sculptural artist who wanted to showcase the beauty which can be found within nature. Overall, the Eden Project is a fantastic example of a tourist attraction, which can have long-lasting positive effects on both the people that visit, but also on the planet. If you get the chance to visit, I would highly recommend getting there early and giving yourself the whole day to explore the project. I would also encourage you to buy something from the gift shop, which will help out local businesses. Thank you for watching Going Green. We've got some very exciting projects coming up very soon. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next week.